I think that routines are really helpful for students because it can lend them a lot of confidence when they're learning something new. So for example, if you have a certain routine about how you um, have students decode a new word or how you teach uh, a certain sentence structure and students know, well, first we always do this thing and then we do this thing and then we do this thing. Um, even if they can't read the sentence or decode the word or whatever it is, you're, the content you're trying to get them to do, if they can act, go through the actions of the procedure, they feel like they did something. Um, and they, f they will walk away feeling more confident than if they just sat there. Um, so I think routines and procedures can be helpful in giving students some confidence and feeling ownership over their classroom and their space even when they may not know the content. One thing I've found to be true for myself when it comes to maintaining high expectations and, and how routines and procedures in the classroom play into that is that I will have done my job fairly well if by the end of the year or even by the middle of the year, someone could walk into my classroom or my space um, and the students appear to be doing most of the work. If someone walks in and I'm meeting with a small group, for example, and we're done, I would hope that the students, and, and I say, okay, now it's time to clean up. Like if, if we're halfway through the year, I don't wanna to have to say anything else. I don't wanna to have to say, put this over here, no, this goes in that, and did it. They should know because I should have taught them. And I think it makes them more confident when they see their teacher just saying, okay, time to clean up. And then just standing there, not doing anything for a few minutes while the students do it all. Um, not because you're trying to work them hard, but just because then they feel like this is my classroom. Setting routines can help with that, with students achieving their their own expectations because if they see okay in September I I didn't understand warm up but now we're in December I understand warm ups we're going to begin this class with warm ups every day I got that down they can check that off themselves and say I got this when I come into the classroom I know to open up the warm up document and get that done um, and they, they already know, like they can set up that expectation for themselves and see how far they've come. I think it's really important to differentiate what my expectations are versus theirs. Every quarter I have them set their own goals. What do they want to, to achieve every quarter with me at least? So using notebooks and using uh, rubrics are definitely a widely used procedure or routine in my class. Um, notebooks, I found, keep students organized, uh, not binders, like having them actually have a notebook where they can be proud of the work that they've done throughout the year. And they organize it where it becomes kind of like a mini textbook that they can carry on with them to the next level. Creating groups and creating captains started because my administration um, was definitely going overboard with enrollment in my classes. I had over 50 students in multiple periods. And even as a, a newer teacher, I, um, I still felt that responsibility was mine to make sure that I touched every student every day. And to try to make it to 50 plus students per period every day, it was impossible. And I was just overwhelmed on not being able to make sure that everybody was okay. And so within that year, I had to come up with something. I was like, we, we got to come up with something. How can I get everybody checked in um, every, every period? And so we're going to do groups. We're going to do groups and we're going to have a speaker for that group. And that speaker, I was like, I got to come up with a name. We're going to have captains. And then I was like, but what if that captain is absent? 
So we got to vote for the co-captain. So it just, and then I was like, well, then the other ones are going to feel, the other students are going to feel like they need a, a, um, a title as well. Uh, so I let them, them come up with their own thing per group outside of captain and co-captain. So what's this person's role and so forth. So they distributed the roles um, within their groups once the captains are voted on. I mean, the co-captains um, are voted on. And then in this column, you're gonna put down one positive thing. One positive. Thing about the presentation. Okay, so one positive thing about the presentation. So for example, in your, um, in, your, in your presentation tickets, not your exit tickets, but in your presentation tickets and these, I told you what I'm looking for. So when you guys look at Floor, or when you listen to Floor's group, or when you listen to Andrea's group, if, Andrea, if Andrea's group, if it's super fluid, muy fluido, you guys can put down, Andrea had a very organized presentation. Do I want to see good presentation? So let's go. That was good presentation. Quiero ver eso. I don't want to just see good presentation. What about perfect presentation? No, I want to see a complete sentence. Una oración completa, right? Why is it perfect? Por qué es perfecto? Por qué es great? Por qué es good? Right? Um, you can say eye contact. Andrea's group had good eye contact. In one of my classes, one student, un estudiante, from memory, the memoria, uh, the whole presentation, and everybody put down good, one good thing was that, I think it was um, Henry had it all memorized. Oh, nice. Are you guys okay with her taking over those two roles? 